Mike Huddleston's work on the first issue of Decorum with Jonathan Hickman was absolutely stunning from the get-go. The opening sequence in particular raises a lot of interesting formal points, similar to what we've been discussing in this series recently. So I want to take a look at what Huddleston does in this episode with colour, art style and page composition to give the form of the comic a narrative weight. You're watching Strip Panel Naked, I'm Hass, and I'm going to show you some of the cool stuff lurking in the pages of some of the best comics. The first page of Decorum really gives you an idea of style as a way of portraying the world. Essentially, the flexibility of comics allows you to do whatever you want in the presentation. I've long argued in this series that because comics are inherently false, right, there's like an inherent high level of artifice in them, and because they require us as readers to make them come to life, there's so much flexibility in what you can present on the page and not break the suspension of disbelief so much more than in any other medium. And on the first page here, which is the third story page, there are two dramatically different styles of illustration. One is this painted look, and the other a scratchier inked style. And the painterly one feels much more objective to me, a more realistic rendering of the world, almost like you can see a painter looking at a landscape and trying to recreate that as much as possible in the reality on the canvas. Obviously the composition is subjective, but it creates what you could argue to be a somewhat realistic portrayal of a world. And therefore, it sort of removes us from the scene a little bit as observers more than players. We are not in this scene so much as we are observing that scene. When you compare that to the inked lines, they immediately feel much more rushed and immediate because of their style. The scratchiness, the roughness, and the dropping out of colour all combine to make something that feels very much at odds with the impact of the painted imagery previously. It immediately feels much less specifically real, and therefore much more subjective. And the next page does it again too, but in a slightly different way. The top half of the page mixes that more graphic style with a more painterly one before going back to the full painted style. And over a few pages, you do get a sense of what might be happening here, right? If the world, when it's painted, feels much more like a realistic portrayal, then we're getting something far more subjective elsewhere. And consider that every single panel, every single image in a page has some level of point of view. Either it's the point of view of us as the reader, or it's the point of view of the character in the scene. And it doesn't have to be drawn in a different way for that effect to happen, panels all have a point of view. And if we look at these panels devoid of style, we can see that this is very much the point of view of the robot warrior. And then it's combined by Huddleston with this specific style, which then takes that to another level. So the yellow handle, for example, is honed in on by the robot warrior, and we get a sense of how that robot sees the world. It creates a very, very, very specific point of view. And similarly on this page, the tribal characters see the world in a dampened way, not as full as we the audience see it, but much more natural than the robot. And that's really cool, right? It means that we can learn about these civilizations and these characters from how Huddleston just chooses to render them. And that really gets solidified when these odd, almost Dali-esque creatures come in. And okay, right, so most comic book pages are drawn on a blank piece of white paper. The artist fills in what we need to see. So in these painted pages, what we see is everything. We see the whole world. We see an intense foreground, an intense background. We see fully rendered characters. The robot sees enemies clearly and the target objective, but the rest is kind of blank and disappears into the background. It's just sketched in. The tribe's people are the natural world. You know, they see each other and they see the world in a kind of similar way to the way that we as the audience see it. But for example, the way they see the ocean therefore then becomes much more subjective, which is just rendered as this sort of blanket blue. So maybe it represents the thing that surrounds or entraps them or something they see as alien or foreign, but we see that they see it differently than the way they see the rest of the natural world around them and each other. And the way that the robot sees the world is not dissimilar to the way that these Dali-esque aliens see the world. They are surrounded by white, and when they take over, everything just disappears. Even in this cool sequence, the way that our control over the direction of the panels works, they take control of that too. And even how they match colours to a certain person on the page here, there's a clear indication that they're honing in on something, much in the same way the robot does in that earlier scene. So it's not just that you can create different points of view through style, but it's also that you can connect them to each other too, which is to me unbelievable and so interesting. Just as these are connected to the robot, so are the tribespeople's ink wash and soft watercolour connected to the objective painted style of the comics, which arguably is the way that we as the human readers therefore see it. So the enemy is established in the way that they connect, and we are therefore connected as readers to those humans in that story, the ones getting killed. And without really understanding anything about them, we can't understand their language, we don't really have a sense of who these people are as characters, but already we've created a human connection to them because we understand that they are basically us in this world. And that's a lot of heavy lifting there, right? A ton of it to say that there is essentially no dialogue in any of these panels. Because it establishes intent, it creates connections between things both within the comic and with us outside reading it, and it also sustains a level of dynamic interaction and interrogations of the form that a lot of comics honestly never come anywhere close to. 
And it's doing that through choice of medium and context, right? With a clear and purposeful intent to the style and approach. And that to me is absolutely fascinating to observe and to unpack. But more importantly, and especially from a narrative point of view, it's a fascinating experience as a reader to bring it all together too. Essentially, Hickman and Huddleston are creating a kind of investigation for the reader here. They're laying everything out on the page, and the lack of dialogues and specifics to focus on mean that we have to start piecing this world together, and therefore we create a much deeper understanding of this world than would have ever happened. This is a beautiful example of some of the stuff that we've touched upon in this series recently, which is about how form and style is really, really important in creating narrative within the comic book. Huddleston takes point of view as is written by Hickman and turns it into something that is much more specific, much more nuanced, and much more interesting to compound and build upon the other styles used in the comic. So he's using the medium itself to heighten that sense of point of view and create correlation and connection between other characters and us as readers. And if that doesn't get you excited, I don't know what will. Thanks for watching. I'm talking more about this comic over on the Strip Panel Naked Patreon page, so if you want to support the channel and get access to years of exclusive writing, please subscribe. You can also find me on Twitter at Hassan Awi and the magazine I edit at panelxpanel.com. And you can hit subscribe and that notification bell to keep up to date with all the latest episodes, and I'll see you next time.